Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. Paris Rapeseed. I said two weeks ago how it was sometimes a sheer joy to write commentaries here because of the beauty of the patterns. Well, it still is. There continue to be two key patterns here. The first and larger one is the February 2021 to July 2022 ascending broadening wedge pattern. You can see part of the lower trend line highlighted in blue in the top left hand corner, which I think is that way, on my daily chart. To be honest, you can't really see it as it's so large, but it is there. This was not a perfect pattern, but it had been the main market driver here in the early part of 2022. The break lower in August last year left the following incredible targets on the downside, which I highlighted at the time. Primary target X is in the 352 even area with a harder to reach secondary target X1 in the 2217 area. These were, are obviously, well, pretty much out there targets that you can put into your diary, on the back page, and just look at maybe once a year. There's also a newer, smaller pattern, though it is still quite big on this daily chart, is the early July to late October last year bearish Andrews pitchfork. This is where the joy comes in. The market has since October last year, until this week, moved down in between the middle tine, currently at 454, and the upper tine above, currently at 524. You can clearly see the tines highlighted in purple on my daily chart. I thought back when I drew this one that I might eventually need to finesse it or even turn it into a something of a shallower bearish shift pitchfork, both of which I would have been happy to do in a heartbeat, but no, but not so far. It has not needed any surgery and is still excellent in showing the bearish angle of attack of the market all the way since late October last year. The only new feature which has happened this very week has been the break below the middle time. We have seen a recovery since, and there is an argument that the gap unfilled uh, below it is to look at the midweek action as a possible island bottom. Um, it's a little early to, for that right now, but I can see the point of that. Instead, I, if we look below, we can see the two necklines so close together as support that are actually below the market and the next levels that we will see any support coming through. Um, and they are from the November 2019 to February 2020 move at 398 and 399. And they're closer to December 2020 lower at 396 even. Plus we have the lower time still currently at 384. Finally, there is the elephant to address in the room, which may be becoming the beginning of a herd of elephants. You see, we had a monthly key reversal down in November last year. And whatever you do, please make sure you take that into your calculations or thoughts. Now, there had been a weekly key reversal up in mid-December, and we had seen a follow-through higher to that for the following two weeks thereafter. But prices ran out of steam on their approach to the upper time back in early January, and the market turned lower, such that this past January we've made yet another monthly key reversal down. Thus, we come to some of the nearby congestion. Above, we have the 2013 high at 464 and the June 2021 low at 468. And that's in a band between 460 to 469, and that's being tested at the moment. Meanwhile, below, we have a congestion zone between 438 to 446 that has been penetrated, but still seems to have given the market a bitter taste for the downside for now. Winnipeg Canola. This is yet another daily chart that previously has given me great joy, but things are changing here. If I take you back, back to late summer last year, I had said the following, and I quote, it became evident since the start of the sideways to slightly lower movement we've seen here since June that there was a shallow bear channel, and that's currently between 872.20 and 748. And I continued, and it is this that had been driving the market lower during the summer, end of quote. Now, to emphasize this point, I further added, and I quote, so it seems that until this sli that slightly bearish 
uh, slightly bearish channel breaks or morphs into another pattern, it will continue to show the slightly bearish angle of attack on the market. End of quote. Well, as you can see, that bear channel was still there leading the way lower until last week. I've highlighted it in dark blue on my daily chart. Now, we had at the start of this year another feature that impinged upon the market. It was the June 2020 to date broken uptrend, which I've still kept highlighted on my daily chart in bright red. The market came close to testing this back in early September and then again in late November, finally punching down through the uptrend in late January. And back then it looked for a few days like we could see this bear channel move into a sideways triangle. However, the market sauntered through this uptrend in late February and seemingly only discovered that it had done such a thing in early March, as you can see by the exploitation of the move lower. Now, I have not given up on the idea of, the bear, of this bear channel, also I'm not giving up the idea of the sideways triangle, with a break lower of all the implications that may have. Thus, we have some targets below for this loosely constructed sideways channel. The primary target X was in the 768.5 area, and the secondary harder to reach target X1 is down in the 688 area. Two weeks ago, the market dropped down and reached target X, which will now be retired after this commentary. The move lower indeed looked good to try down to target X1, with, with seemingly little in the way apart from the July 2008 high at 71080. However, a little after piercing this support, the market started showing indecisive actions culminating in an outside day yesterday with bullish tendencies if only just and that was also a bullish double today has overall been higher but still looking indecisive however this move lower well it didn't when i started writing this reading this uh, however this move lower has prompted me to set out some potential targets for the bear channel pattern below just in case so a primary target has already been reached in the 726 zone, whilst a secondary hard to reach target X2 would be in just below the bottom of my daily chart in the 644 and a half zone. Now, one final point is something I've raised some 11 weeks ago and every occasion since, and I quote, there is just the thought of what may be the whole April today action. It can be seen as a bottoming action. You see, it can all be seen just as it is a shallow bear channel or you might look at it as part of a very large bearish halfway station. It is all still too early on these thoughts, but I think they need to be present when things start to happen eventually. End of quote. We are closer than ever now to looking at the action as a possible very large bearish halfway station. So continue to watch this space. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. Back over September and mid-October last year, the market formed a small but effective reverse head and shoulders pattern. It was a break higher over the neckline for this pattern, combined with the break higher over the old neckline of the September 2015 to November 2017 head and shoulders top, which is currently at 39.56, and which is highlighted in bright red. And finally, the break above the short medium moving average, currently 39.91, that altogether caused the move up in early November. It gave potential targets on the upside of a primary target in a 42.45 area and a secondary harder to reach target X1 in the 44.40 area. In late October, prices reached the primary target and we've come close to target X1 as recently as early March, but we've not managed it as yet to get up that far. I thought about retiring target X1 more than once, but cautious as I am as an individual, I've, I've kept it on and I would again for a little while longer. You see, Every time we've seen an attempt higher, we've also seen the market drop back to the seeming security of the combined support of the old neckline, the short medium moving average, and the medium moving average. That's currently at uh, 40.08. Except this time. I'll have more to say on, on these moving averages shortly, as I wish to expand on a new pattern I discussed some uh, 11 weeks ago. In the meantime, I've also drawn a mid-August to early November 2022 mildly bearish shift picture, which is highlighted in bright green on my daily chart. And the market is currently testing the middle time below. And that's currently at 42.46. The current move lower was started back at the beginning of March when uh, the market tested a combination of the declining long moving average, currently 41.25, and the upper time, currently 42.46. And despite a good effort, the market fell to punch up through it and has made enough of a bearish impression 
that we are currently looking at a potential monthly key reversal down for March. Thus, if we close next Friday, either over 41.29 or under 38.06, then we'd be on. Okay, so now it's to now best to look at the potential supports below. And the first three present themselves at the following levels. The June 2021 low at 33.26, the January 2021 low, 21 low at 32.45, and the September 2022 low at 31.75. We also have the October 22 low at 35.45, but I'm not sure how competent that is as support. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.